Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to go over the UV unwrapping. I've got my chest here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select it. What I would normally do is you what you would normally see is UVs over here, but I already went in and edit and delete. The reason I delete the UVs is so that I don't have to worry about any seams that have already been pre-made by Maya. So I can create my own. So I delete then I go to create, make sure your object is selected and then camera base. So what this does is this, this gives us seamless UVs. I'm going to go to edge and I'm going to select the, U, the uh, areas that I want to cut. All right, so I've got my, my edges selected. I'm going to come over to the UV editor. I'm going to shift, right click, hit cut. I'm gonna go to object mode because I haven't finished. So I'm gonna hit control one to isolate. <clears throat> I'm gonna go under here and I'm gonna cut this out now. So go back to edge mode. I'm going to select these edges. Here, cut. So now, if I go to UV shell, you can see where and what your UV islands are going to look like. So now, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go to UV. I see that everything's been cut out. I'm going to select this. I'm going to shift, right click, unfold, and I'm going to click on this little checker box. Uh, what you can do is if this isn't checked, you can have it automatically lay out your UVs for you. That way, see if I hit apply right now, they're all stacked on top of each other. If I hit layout UV, I can hit apply and it will lay them out. So I'm going to hit close or you can hit apply and close and it'll close it. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here go to arrange and layout and I'm going to orient shells and then I'm going to shift right click again I'm gonna to go to layout layout UV and I currently had stack similar on but I'm gonna turn that off so if you use stack similar that means anything with similar geometry so if I lower this if I go to UV shell so if I click on this, this shell and this shell are sharing the same space right now. And this shell and this shell, this shell and this shell, they're, ser they're sharing the same space. This is a good way to save space. However, if you, whatever you paint on this one or on this one will appear. So if I paint on this one, whatever I do over here will appear over here. So if I, don't, if I want to have a variety, what I have to do is I have to lay them out individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift right click again. I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to click on the little box. And I'm going to turn off stack similar. So now another thing you have to do is shell padding. So what shell padding does is it creates a bleed for your shells. It gives it a bleed. It, think of this as the bleed range. So whenever you take something into Substance Painter, it's going to go from the edge of the geometry or of the UV, and it's going to add, uh, right here I have it set at 10, so it's going to add 10 pixels of bleed to give it an outline. So it's, uh, it gives me a, a, a 
safety net when it comes to my colors, my my UV maps and other and uh, other uh, roughness maps and things like that. So you always want to give it some padding. Uh, another thing is tile padding. So this you can keep. I usually cut it in half just so that it still has the bleed when it gets to the edge of the tiles. So what tile padding does is you look at this. Each individual square here is a tile. All right. So with tile padding, what it does is it'll grab your UVs and it will give it some space between the edge of the tile and the edge of the UV. So I'm going to give it five. I'm going to hit up here. I'm going to hit apply. And it's going to lay out the UVs. And as you can see, this is 10 pixels right here. This is 10 pixels. Uh, and it's laid everything out nice and neat. As well as over here, here's the padding for the tiles. This is going to be five pixels. So now what I have to do is I can go over to textures, turn on checker map, and I can look at the UVs and see if there's any serious distortion. I don't see any except for on this shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this in half. So I'm going to click on that, click on that. Okay. Oh, click on that. Deselect these edges. I'm going to turn off textures because it's really distracting. Make sure I have everything that I want selected. Go over here, check to see if I missed anything. Doesn't look like it. So now I'm going to shift, right click over here, and hit cut. I'm going to go to UV. I'm going to select everything again. Just Or what you could do is you could select each individual ones of these and just hit unfold. And there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. This is where I want to select everything. And I'm going to go to layout. So what it does is it tries to save space. It's not perfect at it, but so as you can see, if I go into textures and checker map, the distortion isn't quite as bad and it wraps a little bit better. So what ends up happening though, is this seam right here, it, if you were going to take this into Photoshop, this seam would be really visible if all you were doing was painting on these, but we're taking into substance, so this isn't too much of an issue. But what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, turn off this texture again. I'm going to orient shells and see what that did. Yeah, that straightened things up just, yeah, that that lines up a little bit better. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to select this and I'm going to put another object onto this map. So what I'm going to do, I already deleted the UVs for this one. So I'm going to go, click on the object, create camera based. I'm going to isolate this so that I can work on it by itself. And I'm going to select the, I'm going to go into edges and I'm going to pick what I want to cut. Now, what I could do is I could cut out these faces right here, which I think I might do. Yeah, because these are going to be different materials, so I'm going to cut them out. So the way I like to do UVs is I like to cut things out by material. So if I know this is going to be a, like a, a wood material and this is going to be metal, I'm going to separate the two. Just that way I can mask them off and I don't have to worry about you know ending up with wood on my metal. So I'm going to go over here, cut. And if you ever end up accidentally uh, say 
so I cut something way down the line and I, I can't go back and fix it with the un unfolding or with the control Z. So what I can do is I can click on the edge, click on the cut, shift, right click, and sew, and it'll get rid of that UV. So I'm gonna go to UVs. It looks like I have everything cut out. Select it, shift, right click, unfold. I'm going to orient shells and I'm going to go to layout and layout again. That looks all right. So now because so with this one, this is a UV shell that you most likely will never see. So if someone's not going to see something or it's a guarantee that somebody isn't going to see it, I wouldn't say guarantee because in certain games you use asset, you're going to use assets over and over again. So, but if no one's going to see this, what you can do is you can grab this and shrink it. And I would, what I would do is I would stick it over here. That way it's kind of out of the way in its own separate area. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to objects. Since I have everything unwrapped, I'm going to hit objects. I'm going to hit control one to bring back my objects. I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to go to UV. So what this does is it allows me to mess with the UVs of both objects. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hit layout. So what that does is that lays out all the UVs for uh, yeah, it just lays out all the UVs. And now I've got this little square here that, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's go to object mode and isolate uh, UVs. So now I've got my, uh, I've got my little square, which is the bottom face that no one's going to see. And all I have to do is drag this in here and just stick it somewhere. You can stick it in the middle of something because no paint's going to be in there. You can stick it over here. Okay, so there's my object. Not too much distortion. Everything looks all right. I'm going to call it good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to export this into Substance Painter. 